Ellie Gould had her whole life ahead of her. She had no idea that her first serious relationship that she was in for only three months would cost her everything and end her life. Welcome to Viral Crimes. Subscribe and hit the bell icon for more stories. Ellie Gould met Thomas Griffiths during their A-level studies. The two had been acquainted since seventh grade and her parents had silently approved of the relationship. While Ellie was an excellent student, an avid horse rider, and aspired to join the mounted police, Griffiths was a member of the school's rugby and swim teams. Both of them possessed exceptional academic abilities. Griffiths was regarded by Ellie's parents as a calm boy who seemed to be well-mannered. At least, that was the image Ellie's parents had formed before to their terrible discovery. Ellie ended a relationship with Griffiths after three months of dating. She explained to her friends that he was smothering her with his presence, making it difficult for her to focus on her schoolwork. Ellie also told them that Griffiths had not reacted well to their separation. She had no idea how badly Griffiths had received her ending the relationship. Ellie had been at home studying on the 3rd of May 2019 while waiting on a ride to school with one of her friends. Griffiths' mother dropped him off at school, but when he arrived, he sent an email to his teachers to inform them that he was unwell and caught a bus home to Derry Hill. He waited in his bedroom until he heard his mother depart before grabbing the keys to one of the vehicles and driving to Ellie's home. He discovered her in the kitchen and attempted to persuade her to reconsider their split. She could not be persuaded. Griffiths attempted to strangle Ellie in a fit of rage. While restraining her, he took one of the counter knives and stabbed her 13 times in the neck. Griffiths continued to clean up the evidence of his crime after the gravity of his actions sunk in. To begin, he put Ellie on the kitchen floor and placed a knife in her hand to create the appearance of a suicide. Following that, he discovered some scraps of fabric and an apron, which he used to wipe up any excess blood and evidence of him being in her home. Additionally, he picked up Ellie's phone and messaged her friend to inform her not to show up. Finally, he grabbed all of the bloody garments he had worn while cleaning the murder scene and went home. Griffiths tossed his clothing in the laundry before requesting a lift to school from one of his neighbors. His mother arrived to pick him after school and he claimed to have had a regular day. Ellie's father discovered her lifeless body on his kitchen floor about 3 p.m. on the same day of her murder. He couldn't believe it and phoned Ellie's mother's number. However, the situation was quickly taken over by the police. Griffiths was the target of their suspicions after considerable research. Their suspicions were reinforced when Griffiths' face was wounded by self-defense cuts from Ellie, despite his protests that the markings were self-harm marks caused by the stress of examinations and the end of his relationship. The police discovered CCTV evidence showing Griffiths driving to Ellie's residence around the time that Ellie was killed. They had also spotted Griffith's bloodied shoes and abandoned items of bloodied clothing in the woods near his residence. Griffiths was charged with murder on the 6th of May. Griffiths first denied participation, claiming that he and Ellie were supposed to study together later. When police arrived to interview him, he exhibited worry for her and tried to persuade them that he was innocent before the reason for their presence was disclosed. Despite this, he was placed in custody and did not make a plea to the court. Griffiths pled guilty towards the end of August, despite the fact that his trial was set for the 28th of October. He was sentenced to life in prison, with a minimum of 12 years behind bars, before becoming eligible for parole. He did not, however, get the full life sentence, since he was not completely regarded an adult in the legal sense. Ellie's parents vehemently disagreed, believing that the gravity of the act ought to be examined and handled around the same degree as adults. During the inquiry into Ellie's death, the authorities discovered that she'd been the target of Griffith's academic sabotage. The reason for their separation was straightforward. Ellie wanted to focus on her A-level examinations, so she ended a relationship with Griffiths because it was too distracting. Griffiths' motive, according to the authorities, was to disrupt Ellie's social and economic independence, which she would have achieved by earning high marks. Griffiths had attempted to use this as a kind of domestic abuse to disrupt Ellie's life in order to gain more control over her. Part of the reason Griffiths broke and went directly to murder, according to the police, was his fears, as well as he knew he couldn't change Ellie's mind. What happened to Ellie Gould was a tragedy. She was taken way too soon. Thomas Griffiths has caused her friends and family unimaginable pain. Please pray for their continued healing. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.